uh, we can say the beginners who want to understand the general concept of composite handling and this is why I will present today uh, the basic workflow which is required to perform this analysis in our software. So during the session you can send your questions, uh, you can send your doubts using the chat which is located at the bottom of your webinar panel. So let's start from the most general definition of the composite. Uh, so the composite material consists, um, we can say, consists of two uh, of more different materials uh, which are composed to form a single structure. So this consolidation proceeds on the macroscopic level, which means, uh, uh, for example, steel alloys, which uh, are a composition of many components in the microscopic scale, are not composites because they behave as typical homogeneous materials on the macro level. So property of the composite depends on particular properties of the component materials and this is why the composites are very interesting for many areas of industry. So the most needed combination of required parameters is high strength and low weight and the composites uh, are the example that they have both of these features in the same time and that's why they are used, uh, they, are, they are widely used in aerospace automotive industry and uh, you can uh, meet the compo composites for example using your sports equipment. So other composite advantages are high temperature operability, corrosion and chemical resistance, um, composites are not conductive, uh, they have very high durability and um, uh, tailored properties. This is also a very important parameter. Uh, at the beginning I would like to also uh, mention that today's webinar is a supplementary session to the webinar we made before. So if you want to get more detailed knowledge please visit um, our YouTube channel and find a webinar about the composite materials in Midas NFX. So we will find much more theory there and more detailed description and on the next few slides uh, you will see um, above the logo and title, title slide and this means that similar topic is also presented in the previous webinar. So the most of materials uh, of composite materials consist of two components and we can say uh, phases which means there is one continuous phase which is called matrix and uh, the second phase which is uh, surrounded phase and this phase is called dispersed phase. Sometimes we call it, uh, actually not sometimes but many times we are calling it reinforcement. So as I said before, the total mechanical properties of the composite depends on particular properties of the components, but not only. And uh, the properties of the composite composites are usually a function of the properties of uh, just mentioned phases, their relative amounts and uh, the geometry of the, uh, of the dispersed phase. So the dispersed phase uh, let's say geometry means the shape of the particle for example, the, the particle size, distribution and orientation. So um, depending on the type of the reinforcement we can divide the composites, uh, composites on three groups. So we can, uh, we can say that uh, we have a particle reinforced composites, fiber reinforced and structural and the first group is divided uh, by large particle and dispersion strength composites. The second uh, group uh, consists of continuous uh, and discontinuous fibers and the third one is the laminates and sandwich panels. And some of the example is below uh, on the slide. So I think um, I, I observed a small delay between the 
slides so i would like to uh, I, would, I would like to stop for a while so now i think the next slide uh, is up here so now let's take a, a look more closer on the laminate construction so one single layer is called lamina or ply and typically uh, ply is a um, is a flat group of fibers em uh, embedded in the matrix so the matrix is usually an isotropic material that that holds the fibers together so in a ply called a tape for example the fibers are unidirectional and in a ply which called a cloth the fibers are woven at 0 and 90 degree directions so uh, many different materials can be used as fibers or matrices and the examples example materials for fibers are graphite glass uh, carbide tungsten for example and the example for the matrices uh, include um, aluminum or uh, epoxy re re resin the first uh, the, other, the other thing that which is important for the laminate construction is supposed to notice the fact that the principal material axes are parallel and perpendicular perpendicular to the fiber directions this is something important now let's take a look uh, on the next slide which defines uh, the uh, laminate definition so basically a laminate is a stack of lamina arranged with the principal directions of each lamina at different orientations so as to obtain the desired strength and stiffness properties this is the basic let's say definition so each ply has a different direction material and thickness uh, composite properties are calculated in the material coordinate system and axis zeta of the materials is the same as the zeta axis for the global structure so positive angle for example and I will back uh, to this uh, later uh, positive angle or angles are defined by right hand of rule so we need this feature to, to define the orientation for the composite and I will talk about that uh, uh, later the next thing that I would like to introduce to you is the laminate coding so uh, we received a lot of questions from you how to handle the composite so I think that uh, this basic introduction to the coding is quite important for you so the laminate codes are used to define the ply orientations of the laminate and uh, this is the main purpose to provide a simply easily understood method of uh, describing the layup of laminate and there are many ways to describe the laminate so if we take a look on this uh, picture we see uh, the, the example of the laminate with uh, this coding uh, so what does it mean it means that we have first of all we have uh, five plies so this is the the ply number one ply number two ply number three and ply number four uh, and also ply number five uh, number five or fifth ply uh, is showing the same angle so for the first ply we have the angle which is uh, which equals to zero for ply number two we have some minus theta for ply number three the uh, material direction is uh, is rotated uh, uh, about 90 degrees plus theta and zero so this is the coding so this laminae lamina are listed in uh, sequence starting from the tool surface for example and each lamina is labeled by its ply orientation and separated by slash so so this is quite easy and multiple laminae of the same angle are indicated by the subscript and you can find uh, this subscript uh, in this example because this is the second example uh, the, this, uh, this example refers to the uh, axi uh, this refers to the symmetrical laminate uh, so as you see we have um, many layups and uh, what we see at the bottom is the three methods uh, which are used to to code to 
this laminate. So you can spend some time and, and guess and find the difference between them if you need, of course. So how to consider the laminate? So at this moment we know that the laminate consists of many layers and the question at this moment is how to take into account the particular layer characteristics and describe the overall behavior of the laminate. So with the answer comes the classical lamination theory and I will not present to you all concepts of mentioned theory today but I want to remind to you a few the most uh, let's say important assumptions. So first assumption is that, that each individual lamina is in the plate, plane stress. Laminates are perfectly bonded. Uh, so no lamina can see sleep relative uh, to each other and bonds are presumed to be very thin and non-shear deformable. And theory of thin shell of thin shells by Kirchhoff is valid. This is the assumption number three. And then uh, the basic conclusion is that we can consider that displacements and deformations are continuous to, through interlaminate interfaces. And as I said before, uh, should the deformability can be neglected. So you can refer to this theory and uh, you can also uh, play the previous webinar because we we talked about that. So now let's focus on MIDAS NFX and the composite material feature inside the software. So composites in MIDAS NFX are supported for shells and solid elements and all necessary parameters are defined via presented windows. So to define the composite basically you have to specify the composite stacking sequence you're supposed to provide the allowable interlaminar shear stress and then the other name is the bond shear allowance and this parameter must be specified in, if we want to calculate the factor of safety against shale, shear failure between laminate panels. This also defines the strength between the bonded laminate shields. Uh, and the last thing is to specify the required failure theory and you can select from the Hillhoff and Saivu and we'll back to this uh, uh, later. So at this moment let's take a look on the stacking sequence um, editor or let's say layup editor. This dialog box is uh, used to define the laminate configuration very easily. So all you have to specify is uh, for, sing for, for single ply is the material thickness and orientation angle. So to define the material you can simply click on this icon and, uh, and the material di dialog box will appear. So the, the rest of the parameters um, are related with the output so you can easily check uh, the output for uh, each indi individual ply and you can also change the Simpson integration points but, but this is related to the numerical methods and, uh, and algorithm itself so I will not discuss this today. So let's start from the uh, material and the first input for the stacking editor is, uh, is this parameter. So at this moment I want to remind uh, to you some material types which are available uh, in MIDAS and FX and, and today MIDAS and FX supports three types of materials for the structural, for actually four types but uh, let's say these this three ones are uh, uh, the most important at this moment. So we support the isotropic uh, material which has got the same uh, mechanical and thermal properties in all directions and uh, uh, steel is a good example of this material. The second type is the anisotropic which has got different material properties in all directions and for example uh, in that case the volcano lava chunk uh, is a good example. Uh, the third one, the third type is autotropic and this type, uh, this, uh, this type assumes that all mechanical and thermal properties are unique and independent in free perpendicular, perpendicular directions 
and this is also the special case of the anisotropic material. So, in Midas and FX we can consider 2D and 3D orthogonality. So, to, for composite modeling, uh, orthotropic material, materials are widely used. So, Midas and FX requires the entry of, uh, let's say, five values. So, we have to specify two Young's moduli for materials primary directions. I'm talking about this, uh, this dialog box. So, you have to specify the elastic modulus for direction uh, 1, 1 and direction 2, 2. So, the, the, the basic primary direction. Uh, shear modulus, two transverse shear moduli, and Poisson's ratio, and uh, and if you want, to, of course, uh, to consider the gravity, the mass dens density is required. But anyway, you're supposed to notice that the Poisson's ratio is defined as the Poisson's, Poisson's ratio on uh, x y plane, and uh, the mm, 2, 1 Poisson's ratio is not required because the symmetry of the material stress tensor allows an FX to calculate, uh, to calculate it based on the uh, previous data. So, at the rest, there, there are a number of other values that can be entered depending upon what type of analysis um, is going to be carried out. But at this moment, uh, I would like to say a few things that uh, you, ha you have to remember that one of the more difficult aspects of working with the composites is getting the realistic and usable usable material data. So usually, uh, the values, even these values, what we see at this, on that screen, are uh, derived through correlations so, so with the experimental data, with FEA models. So there are some assumptions with that. Uh, we supposed to know that uh, these data are often valid only for certain shapes or loading schemes. And uh, for example, actually, if you have your model can work well in pure flex, but uh, doesn't work well uh, when a lot of shear or twist is imposed on the structure. So you're supposed to remember about these kind of limitations and assumptions, because your FEA model is only as good as the assumptions uh, that go into it. Uh, the another input uh, in the stacking sequence editor is the thickness, but mm, there is uh, nothing special to say about it because everybody knows what is the thickness. Uh, so now I will talk about the orientation angle. So basically the angle is used to enter the orientation uh, for the each ply, and the angles are specified relative to the material axis, which were defined for the element. Uh, that's why you have to always specify the material orientation angle and how to do this in Midas and FX. We have um, uh, some comment, which you, we have this comment to, to add the material orientation and it's hidden in the parameters. Uh, so you can you can easily change the material orientation for your for your uh, for your stacking because if you uh, and uh, and if you do not specify a material orientation angle this let's say that the basic angle will be measured from the first side of the element edge uh, to the to the to, or, or no to the, to the second node, it, it depends. So it's very easy for the quad elements, but I know that uh, you will get a lot of uh, problem to assign the proper the material orientation when you start to work with the triangles or if you create the mesh automatically. So next slide shows uh, the influence of the material angle for the total strength of the composite. So if we consider this single ply, we can uh, simply create this graph, which describes the total load to failure. And if we consider then this um, some kind of, of, of specimen, which is subjected to the tensile loading, 
we can we can sketch the graph which shows us the relative strength of uh, of the composite uh, according in terms in terms of the angle between the fiber orientation and direction uh, of the load force. So by aligning the orientation of fibers, fibers with the direction of the load force, the, re relatively, the re relative strength of the composite can uh, often be significantly improved. So let's take a look on the graph. So if the direction of the load force is more than, let's say, uh, 10 degrees, uh, of the actual fiber orientation, the load uh, carrying capacity may be as low as uh, 10 or 20 percent of the of the actual tensile strength of the fiber. So, so using the angle, you can optimize your composite or your composite structure. And now let's take on the let's take a look on the next slide, which describes. Uh, uh, almost the same, but in terms of the stress versus supply angle. So, so if you take a look on this part of this graph uh, for the zero degrees orientation, uh, what can we observe? So we see that full allowable axial stress is obtained, and the value is around 3,500 megapascals, and this means that fibers are carrying the load in the most uh, favorable actual direction. A uh, matrix is acting to stabilize the fibers and not carrying any significant load. So transverse, transverse stress will tend to pull the fibers apart is zero and shear stress is zero for the uh, zero angle. For the 90 degrees, which is close to this point, transverse properties uh, of the material resisting the load at this moment. So transverse tension uh, allowable stress is around 55 megapascals and this is uh, this, this based mainly on the resin strength. And if, if we consider this range between the 0 and 90 degrees, we can see that uh, even a few degrees from 0 uh, can uh, make the, the strength drops off very rapidly. So, for example, at 10 degrees, uh, the failure is down uh, to, to, for example, 700 megapascals. So, fibers are now subjected to transverse stresses. Fibers and the resin have to balance the applied stress trait. And longitudinal transverse and shift stresses are present. So, all of kind of stress uh, states. Uh, is acting at this case. So at this moment we define the material thickness and orientation angle and right now I would like to mention about two interesting tools um, which you, you can find in the uh, layup editor. So first of all we have a capability to display the laminate properties uh, in form of A, B and D matrices. So this topic has been discussed uh, more detail in the previous webinar. So once again, I insist you to visit the, our YouTube channel and uh, you will get the knowledge where these values come from. So the second tool is the laminate preview, which allows to display the actual stacking uh, configuration and you are able to check which ply is uh, the top one, for example, and uh, which one is the bottom one. So now uh, I would like to back from the stacking sequence editor and uh, and show you some uh, and show you another option which is located in the in the property just under this laminate definition. So I'm talking about the global ply ID. We received a lot of questions um, with um, about the about this feature. So now I would like to demonstrate this using the video which will be I think much more um, helpful for you. So let's take a look on this video. So now what we see on the screen I'm displaying the mesh sets. So uh, we see the geometry of the wing 
and this ring consists of uh, some mesh sets which are called like inner skin, flange 1, flange 2 and outer skin. So this is the inner skin the mesh uh, sets related with, with, with flanges and outer skin. Let's display. Let's play uh, again and now I showed you the uh, ribs. So at this moment I would like to show you the results which um, have been obtained for uh, for for the configuration when this option is unchecked. So the basically idea is that I my wish is to to align the the plies in that sequence at, as on the picture uh, above. But when we uncheck this option, we can only set up the the local ply stacking sequence. So the plies are aligned locally. So if we consider the inner skin, we have uh, five plies. If we consider the flange, which is located at this at this place, we can consider seven plies, and very similar for the rest of the model. So if we investigate the results. Now I'm displaying the results for the ply number two. So what's happening? The whole model is uh, the mo whole model has got some results, but it seems to be not correct because for, if we consider the the outer skin, for example, we have there is no second layer layer. Okay, so let's play ply number three and ply number four. And this is exactly what I wanted to show you. So, for example, in that case, play number four in the local sequence has got the inner skin, flange, uh, flange two. But, for example, outer skin doesn't have a, a ply number four. So this, this, uh, this is this. Let's say makes uh, the results viewing more complex. That's why we are using this global play ID. And now I will show you the results for the same model when this option has been checked. So in that case, as you see, the all layers has got a different global numbering. And let's display the results. So now I'm displaying the results for ply number two, ply number three, and this is valid with my picture because there is no ply three, for example, for the outer skin. Okay. So we have only one global first global ply, but there is no global ply number three. So if we display global ply number four, the whole model except of the ribs will provide you the results. So this is the main concept of the global plies. Now let's talk about the composite failure indices. So uh, now I, I want to introduce to you some failure theo theories, but before we do that, the, let's say the method to, to investigate the failure is, is necessary to, to, to be introduced. So uh, what is important? You're supposed to know that all of the composite failures are checked at the lamina level. This is the, the first thing. And the failure index, which is the most, uh, maybe not most, but very, uh, very common used result, uh, checks whether the state of stress can cause a failure. This is the main purpose of the failure index. So, if the failure index of some particular of some element is less or equal to one, stresses in all laminate um, uh, are within or the respective failure envelopes. Uh, okay, so so if what we can say, uh, how to say that? Uh, let's say the more simple way. So, if the failure I I uh, index is less or equal to what we can say that the laminate is safe, but if the failure index is greater than one, 
we can assume that the element is failed. So, so this is the main purpose uh, of that. So these failure in indices are re related to the failure theories and in the NFX we have Hill, Hoffman, Saifu and other uh, definitions. So, uh, so on the next slide here are the failure modes uh, which um, which are presented for the unidirectional lamina and we can consider the failure according to the longitudinal tension and this mode is called the fiber failure Long, longitudinal compression transverse tension which describes the matrix failure and in plane shear and this is very important uh, because the uh, previously mentioned failure indices represent only a phenomenological failure criterion which uh, which uh, which is which, which is not related with the mode of the failure actually so so we're supposed to uh, keep that fact but uh, there are some failure theories in which are available in Midas and FX. Uh, and basically, if you take a look on the, on the first failure theory, this equation represents a failure envelope in the stress state. And if the stress state of stress is in the autotropic lamina, uh, and the point is, let's say, within of this envelope, we can, we can say that the lamina is safe. But when the point is outside of the lamina, we, we are saying that uh, the element is to be felt. So, so the parameters which are used in these equations are stress limit in the first direction, stress limit in the second direction, and we have uh, shear limits. Uh, and this, uh, this theory is work fine for the tropic materials with equal strength in tension and compression. The second theory is the Hills theory and uh, is the Hoffman's theory and, uh, the, and it has been developed because Hills theory doesn't take into account the uh, differing tensile and compressing strengths in the fiber and matrix directions. So the, the Hoffman's theory for an autotropic lamina is a, a general state of plane stress uh, in a general state of plane stress with unequal tensile and compressive, and compressive strength is given the equation presented on, uh, on this slide. So this uh, equation, as I said, it can be treated as the, as the ex extension of the Hill's theory by adding linear terms to account for differing strengths in tension and compression. So basically this equation uh, describes the ellipsoid in the uh, stress space and it's used to describe this uh, general state of the plane stress with unequal tensile and compressive strengths. The next theory is the Tsai Wu failure theory and this is uh, uh, the theory for, uh, for the, which has been proposed by Tsai specialize uh, to the case of an autotopic lamina in the general state of plane stress and uh, this is the basic equation so you can find all of these components but there is uh, there is a uh, one thing that I supposed to mention at this case that the parameter which is called F12 in, is uh, is to be ev evaluated experimentally so so this parameter is the interaction term and you're supposed to provide this uh, this value manually. How to get this? Uh, there is a stability criterion so you can solve this, uh, this, this equation for example. And this interaction term uh, is determined from the test specimens under reaction loading. So uh, th this is uh, this 
inconvenience along with the constraint that the F1 satisfy a stability criterion of creates a complications to use of this theory and sometimes for that reason it's recommended to uh, to set F1 to, to 0. And the last set of the criteria are the maximum stress, maximum strains and the formulas, related formulas are presented on the screen. The last, um, the last fail literally comes from the NASA Langley Research Center and this is the set of criteria, criteria developed by NASA and this provides a, a very good accuracy with many test results. So mostly this is the first ply failure set of the criteria and it's uh, working with the unidirectional plies in the uh, plane stress straight. So more information you can find uh, in the web using this material for example so you can check it. So MIDAS NFX provides output for the laminar stresses or strain including the approximate interlaminar stresses, element forces uh, and strains. Composite failure can be uh, calculated as a finite element failure index or for example strength ratio. So I didn't say anything about the strength ratio uh, but uh, I will mention about it during the example. And the user has got also an access to specify the location of for the output. So results are provided as the global uh, max or, or, or mean information for your composite or as individual uh, individual result for every ply inside your model. So this is the composite max, composite mean and composite ply 1 for example to, to see the results on the uh, particular ply. So now let's uh, do some, some example. So now I'm switching to the NFX. And we will start doing the example from, from the simple composite plate which will be subjected to the loads uh, to the uh, to the tensile loads for example uh, on both directions so I will use the pounds and inches for my unit system and let's create the, the model so I'm going to the geometry and I will make a face so using the location now I have to specify the re re relative distances so it will be one and one in my case so now I just created the plate and let's hide the all guiders and let's start uh, let's let's define the material properties first so now uh, now I'm, I'm clicking on the material branch and I will delete this uh, alloy steel material I'm clicking once again and let's specify the orth orthotrophic values for my model so this is the first step and for my model I will use following data so for the elastic modulus on the first direction we will enter the value which equals to 20 to the power of 6 for the second direction 2 to the power of to the power of 6 Poisson's ratio 1 2 will be equal to 0.35 and I'm specifying the shear modulus value so it will be the same 
for all, all the rest. So let's change the name, the, the composite, for example, and let's specify the failure parameters. So I will use the stress limits in my case. So as the limit for the tension, I will enter this value. So this will be 230 Xi. For the compression, it will be 195. For the second tension, it will be 13,000 and 32,000 for the compression on the second direction. In plane shear will be equal to 12,000. So I have that. And let's click on OK. And let's click on OK to close the material dialog box. The second step is to define the uh, composite layup sequence. So now I'm clicking on 2D and I'm clicking on Add. From this dialog box I'm selecting the composite shell and I'm clicking on the stacking sequence. So now I have an access to the stacking sequence dialog box and let's start to define the, the, the stacking sequence. So now I'm selecting the composite. Let's set up the thickness of 0.005 inches. The first orientation angle will be 90 degrees and of course we need we want to get some information about the results on that ply so I'm clicking on the uh, I'm clicking yes on the output request. The same for the second ply this time we will enter the 45 degrees and we can also copy the the plies and change the values for the angle so so this is how does look like my laminate so if I click on the show laminate properties we will get the information about the ABD matrix matrices okay let's close and we can go to laminate preview so we can see that the the first ply is actually the first one what we specify so this is the 90, 45, 90 and 0 so this is the stacking sequence in Midas and FX so okay so now I'm clicking on OK and we will use the Hills failure theory and the value for for bonded stress will equal to 5000 for example okay we have it now let's create the mesh so I will click on the generate map face I'm selecting the face and I'm I enter the division number and now I'm clicking on the preview so let's create simple very simple elements so this plate will consist only of uh, four elements so now I'm clicking this okay and how to display the material orientation it's very easily it's very easy to do in Midas and FX because we have this icon so we can show high material coordinate system and as you see uh, the, the material orientation is opposite to the X direction so how to ch change that I'm clicking on the parameters I'm selecting 2D I'm selecting all of uh, elements and I'm clicking on this option add material orientation so we can use the coordinate system we can use the angle reference vector for example let's click on the reference vector
and let's click on apply so as you see I changed this uh, this direction to the opposite one so right now it's it's uh, collinear it has got the same direction as the x-axis for example so now I'm let's assign the constraints so I'm going clicking on the advanced and from this card we can um, we can select the, the, the particular degrees of freedoms so let's check the uh, TX TY and Zeta and uh, RY and let's select this node and let's add the constraint on this on the rest on this edge so five and let's click on OK the next step is to assign the force and I will assign the force uh, node by node so 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 now I'm selecting this node for example and the value will be 12.5 pounds 12.5 pounds second node actually we can assign the same loading for even for the rest nodes so it will be the same so now our model is uh, is fully constrained and the, the load has been applied so now we can go to the analysis and results and we can create the linear static case and we can solve the model but before doing that I'm going to edit and I would like to show you the output control because this is the place where you can select the required uh, output vectors and if you click on the output option you have an access to specify this failure information so first of all we will uh, solve the failure index and the composite output location will be top and bottom so now I'm clicking on OK I'm clicking OK and let's solve it and let's insert the analysis results so basically uh, as default the total translation vector has been uh, has been imported so now right now I'm unchecking that and I will open the results which are related for the maximum values for my composite so I'm clicking on select current all and now we can display the results so now we can display the maximum value for the normal stress in the first principal direction normal stress in the second principal direction and of course we can display the failure index for example so to to display the failure in index is it's, it's convenient to uncheck the model average and check the element center result and we can use the probe tool to display indices element by element so this is quite useful thing for for this type of the results uh, now I would like to show you the tool which is located in the special post and this refers to the composite and through the thickness plot of ply results so if I select the element I can display the value of selected result type across the thickness so for example if I want to get the information about the failure index I can I can receive this result very easily so the in this place I have apply ID and on this axis there is a value so I can easily investigate uh, where the failure index reaches the maximum value so if you need uh, to store this data you can press the text button 
and you are able to get the same information in the text form. So that's all about the composites and uh, this practical example. Now I want to show you some model which has been mm, sent to us from our Italian partner. So as you see, Midas Analytics can handle very complex models. And right now I am using the symmetry of the model. We have this is the model which has been uh, sent to us and now I'm displaying the results. So if we go to the property, I would like to show you the proper, pro property, uh, the property which is related with the composite. So as you see there are many, many composite uh, proper properties in that model. Okay, let's back to the to the presentation. So on that slide I would like to show you some benchmark which has been made for that model. So now you can see and compare the results from Midas Analytics uh, with then MSC NX or NEI Nastran. So as you see accuracy of the Midas Analytics is very, very comparable with the rest of the software. So how to get the more learning resources about the Midas Analytics is very easy. You can visit the, uh, the YouTube channel, for example, or you can directly send to us uh, uh, some some question, for example, so you can uh, you can write direct directly to me or to my colleague Cyprian. Uh, we provide you know, to you some some trial version. And at this moment, I would like to invite you to to participate in the next webinar, which will be about the candle heat transfer and thermal stress simulation. So I hope you will come and you will join the next session. So now is the questions and answer time. So thank you very much for today's webinar and I hope it was informative for you, especially from the basic side. Uh -huh. Okay, some, somebody is asking about the strength ratio. Uh, okay, sorry about that because, uh, because I didn't uh, show you this feature. So, uh, as I said before, this failure index uh, represents um, only a phenomenological failure, but the strength ratio is the uh, more, let's say, direct indicator of failure. Uh, so the strength ratio is defined as the allowable stress and uh, divided by calculated stress. And let's say, for example, if strength ratio is uh, equals to 0 0.5, uh, it, it's not only indicates that failure uh, has occurred, but indicates that the applied load is 50% uh, below the allowable, for example. But uh, in terms of failure index, if we receive the information about 1.5, uh, this, uh, this, this is not representing the percentage of failure. This is informing us that the failure condition exists. So this is the main difference between the strength ratio and failure index. Okay, so there is no more questions. 
at this moment. So I would like to thank you for joining this webinar and I would like to invite you for the next session. So every time you can send to us uh, your queries and we will uh, answer on them. So thank you very much. Goodbye.